Mike uh, D. Giovanna, he covers the Angels for the LA Times. He joins us now. When did you hear rumblings about this, Mike? Uh, I think Tuesday was the first day, Dan, and uh, I put in a good 24 hours of trying to pin it down. And it took uh, probably until the middle of the day, Wednesday, when we finally felt like we had enough, at least from a factual standpoint, and confirmation from, you know, on-the-record sources saying that he's in New York for this meeting. And, you know, we, we obviously had drew the line at a certain point when it comes to the exact nature of what's going on there. But it's pretty clear, you know, you don't uh, get called in in New York for a little slap on the wrist or because you uh, didn't drive a guy in from third and Less than two hours, so uh, there's obviously something big going on, and the Angels are bracing, maybe not for the worst, but definitely bracing for some kind of suspension. Do we know the facts attached to this? Nah, I, you know, obviously there's a lot of speculation out there right now. Uh, the facts, I'm sure, will come forward when uh, when something is announced officially. But uh, as far as the, you know, hard, hard facts, no, I don't think anyone knows the actual fact of what happened. And, you know, there, there are confidentiality uh, clauses in place with the union and MLB. And, and, you know, this stuff is not even supposed to be out at this point. Yeah. And players are, you know, supposed to be afforded due process. So uh, this kind of got out a little uh, before they probably wanted, but uh, that's the way it goes. We saw that in the Ryan Braun case as well. Uh, you know, I'm sure, pretty sure something's going to happen here in the next couple of days, but and then some of the facts will start to emerge. But we may, as is the case with Josh, we may never know all the facts until he comes clean, and, and he's been pretty forthright in, uh, you know, with some of his mistakes in the past and some of his relapses. But we're also he's looking talking at, about them. Right, looking at this situation, though, and he was rehabbing a shoulder in Houston, right? So he's not even with the team. When he was with the Rangers, he had told me he had somebody who was there all the time, you know, traveled with him, you know, road games. Somebody would go to the ballpark with him, and he said he fought the urge. There'd be times he'd drive, and I could go left to a bar, or I could go right to go home. And, I mean, there there was a lot going on. Did the Angels have that sort of um, angel on his shoulder there, uh, even though he wasn't with the team? Yeah, that's been a... An ongoing uh, story with Josh for his first couple years. I think the whole time he was in Texas, he had a full-time yeah. accountability partner is what the, what they called him. And last year, he kind of downsized that role. He had a guy uh, in Texas when he went to Dallas and Houston, and he had another friend from his church traveling with him to the road games, and his uh, wife and four kids were with him in Orange County. And he felt at the time that, uh, you know, with his family holding him accountable, at home that he would be okay. And uh, as far as we know, you know, nothing happened during the season. Uh, and, and, you know, he returns to his off season home in, in the Dallas area over the winter and, uh, you know, assuming his family is with them. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned the whole thing about the rehab. It's just very peculiar for any kind of team to allow a guy to rehab away from the club yeah. during spring training, during the season, they don't even have a locker for Josh in the clubhouse here in Tempe. Uh, I'm not saying he's out of sight, out of mind, but it's pretty clear they did not and do not expect him uh, to be in spring training. What is the update on his injury? Even if he didn't have this, when, when was he going to report to the Angels? Uh, the initial prognosis was six to eight weeks after February 4th surgery, and then uh, the first day or two in camp, uh, that got pushed out to maybe 12 weeks. So I think you were looking at uh, probably May, mm. uh, early May at the earliest, and you know, if you tack on uh, even a 25 game, uh, what might be considered a minimal suspension, you're looking at June there. So, uh, you know, I, I'd be very surprised if we saw him in uniform, uh, certainly by May. And, and, you know, gosh, who knows, maybe even by the All Star break. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have to go, uh, go, go without him for a while here. But I, I was reading, I think Kenny Rosenthal said, uh, you know, whatever was happening was worse than uh, testing for PEDs. But I'm, I'm wondering how the commissioner, the commissioner's office views if it is, you know, it's substance abuse and it's not performance enhancing drugs. Like we've focused on per, you know, performance enhancing drugs for so long. Cocaine used to be in the game in the 70s. But yeah. as far as punishment goes, uh, substance abuse uh, different than PEDs? Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, you know, off the record, I was told by several people that it wasn't PEDs as well. Uh, it's a very, 
it's a strange situation with Josh because he's really a, a special case because of his past history. You know, this guy was suspended from baseball for three years because of a, a real harrowing uh, cocaine and alcohol addiction. Now, I know one of the, the conditions of his reinstatement was that he get tested for drugs three times a week. Uh, but there's probably more conditions in there that never became public. I don't think the commissioner views Josh as a typical uh, player, even on the major league level. You know, if he is uh, if he is relapsed uh, and has used a drug of abuse, is he really considered a first time offender yeah. under the uh, under the under the joint drug agreement? That's a you know, and, and these, as you read through that agreement, you know it's hard to really get a handle on what the penalties would be because there's kind of like a floating scale depending on past transgressions, uh, positive tests, the nature of uh, of what drug you've done, whether it's possessing, maybe selling. There's all sorts of penalties, and uh, I think in this case it might be up to the commissioner's discretion to determine exactly what kind of suspension he is uh, he's hit with. Well, Mike, you did a great job with the story. I know uh, you're being respectful, as uh, you should be, with what he is uh, going to meet the commissioner with. We'll probably get a statement from uh, somebody by the end of the day. But uh, thanks for joining us. We'll be following it, Mike. All right. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. That's uh, Mike D. Giovanna from the L.A. Times.